Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 56. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Business 210, Chapter 5. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 5 website. Hey, we're in Chapter 5, Discrete Probability Distributions. Hey, we already hinted at this a little bit last chapter when we started our study of probability. But here we want to talk about uh, probability distributions and why they are so amazing. We learned our adding and our multiplying rules last chapter, but if you had to rely on those all the time, oh, it'd take much too, too, much, too much time. Now we need to first distinguish between discrete and continuous. Discrete is when you're all quiet, right, and you don't make a lot of noise. No, 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 that's the other kind of discrete. Discrete is counting. I always think it about as counting. There will be gaps between numbers. So 1, 2, 3, even though we know 1.5 does exist, when we're counting or we're using discrete uh, random variables, we're not going to be allowed to use that particular number between. We're just going to do 1, 2. Or we, we could have 1, 2, 3, or we could have 1, 2, 3, and then dot, dot, dot means we don't know how many are above it, but we're only counting, right? So this could be like a number of customers coming in the store. We know we can have 1, 2, but we can't have 1.5. But you could also have things like 1.1, 1.2. So you can use decimals with discrete random variables, but there's going to be gaps between the numbers. The other type of uh, random variable we're going to be using next chapter and um, a lot for the rest of this uh, class are continuous random variables. There's actually an infinite number of possibilities. I always think of a continuous variable as, hey, there's the number 1 and the number 2, but there's lots of possible numbers between here. For instance, weighing how much a box of cereal weighs. It depends on the measuring instrument. We could get, you know, uh, 1.2 pounds, 1.22 pounds, 1.2222 pounds. Right? It can assume any numerical value on any particular interval. Now, random variables. Are, um, we have to define this because we're going to be using this. A random variable is a numeric description of the outcome of an experiment. Now, I really think of it as a quantity resulting from ex an experiment that, by chance, can assume different values. Remember rolling the die? We don't know which one's going to come up. Is it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6? Now, uh, this is a good description, too. A random variable is a numerical description of an outcome because what do we get when we're rolling when we're flipping a coin three times right we can get one head a zero head one two or three so the fact that we get a zero or one that's the numerical description of the outcome we're trying to get uh, let's go to the next page discrete random variable here are some examples there's the definition from the uh, textbook here's some examples roll a die we can get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Scores for a dancer, right? We could get 0, 0.1, 0 0.2, all the way up to 9.8, 9.9, 10. A product defective, right? False means it's not defective, is 0, or true would be 1. So there's our, our numbers associated with it. Uh, inspect to see if 100 boomerangs could fly. If we're inspecting all 100 boomerangs, right, zero of them could be flying. One of them could, two of them, 99, or all 100. I used to run a boomerang manufacturing company, and boy, uh, out of 100 boomerangs being tested, I was hoping that 100 of them came out. Yes, this does fly. Uh, sometimes one didn't come out, and then we threw it, threw it out. Uh, so those are examples. Another example I left out here is, of course, uh, customers coming into a store, right? It's one, two, three, dot, 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 because we don't know how many, we don't know what the upper end is. So that would be uh, also under discrete. Now, continuous random variable, what are some examples here? Oh, 
time to take a timed test, right? So if the test is 10 minutes, it could be between 0 and 10. But depending on the instrument used to measure it, we could get um, 1.5 minutes, 1.55 minutes, 1.00234 minutes. Weight of a cereal box, that's another example of continuous random variable. Uh, again, depending on the measurement. Air pressure in an air compressor. Uh, and an air compressor usually will explode at some upper limit, right? So it would be zero to that upper limit, but anything in between is possible. Also, money is a continuous random variable. I usually think of it as discrete because we have pennies, right? But really, you can uh, have partial pennies or even partial, partial penny in some situations. So money is uh, going to be considered a continuous random variable also. Uh, now, Probability distribution, that's what we're going to be talking about this chapter. Uh, well, let's start with this one. A listing of all the experimental outcomes of an experiment and the probabilities associated with each outcome. Now, we did this last chapter when we listed all the outcomes and then figured out the probabilities. But uh, this book uh, defines probability distribution as a description of how the probabilities are distributed over the values of the random variable. Just think of our example last chapter, which we'll look again in just a moment here, but flipping a coin three times, right? How many heads? You can get 0, 1, 2, or 3. So really what we're interested in is the random variable 0, 1, 2, 3 and the probabilities for those. And we did that example last chapter, and we'll do it again in just a moment. Now, a description or a listing could be uh, of the probability distribution. Remember, all the probabilities. It could be given in a table, a chart, or an equation. Let's go to our next page and look at an example here. Here's a table. Here's our example from last chapter, number of heads. The probabilities all add up to be 1. Each one of these uh, is between 0 and 1. That's the table. Oh, but we also did a chart last uh, chapter. Here was our chart, the probability 0.25, the probabilities for 1 and 2 heads and 3 flips was 0.375, and then finally 3 was 0.125. Or we could do an equation. This equation is not to describe any, oh, actually it is. We could do, this is a binomial uh, a probability function that describes a binomial experiment, and this gives us the binomial probability. We'll use this one later in this chapter. And actually, you could use this one to uh, describe uh, this distribution. We'll learn this later. Totally exciting. We'll use the binom dist function in Excel. Let's go back. Oh, um, well, I'll come back to this in just a moment. I want to go back to the next page just to, we're talking about probability distributions. A discrete, in this chapter we're going to do discrete probability distributions. Next chapter we'll do continuous. Uh, let's look at two more uh, definitions in this chapter. Discrete probability function. Oh yeah, just a moment ago we saw the binomial one, uh, and we'll use that later. But there's going to be a function that will describe, that, or that provides the probability that x assumes a particular value for a discrete random variable. Examples coming. In fact, maybe I'll just zip ahead here and show you. Uh, here's one that we see in this chapter. This is a for uniform probability uh, function. It's just 1 over n, the, the number of values that the random value can assume. Great example for this is rolling the die, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Each one has the same probability. So f of x for the probability equals 1 divided by the count, 6. Uh, if we were going to do it in a chart, it would look something like that. If we're going to do it in a table, it would look something like that. We had a homework problem in last chapter just like that. Let's go ahead. I think it's page 15 in our uh, notes here, PDF. Oh, there's that awesome pro binomial probability function. Once you use it a couple times, it becomes quite easy. We'll talk about it uh, later in this chapter. And also, the binome dist function, will uh, Excel function, we'll use a lot. This function 
has this behind the scenes. Now let's go back one last thing before we jump over to Excel. Um, this is page four. Now, why in the world do we want probability distributions? Ah, oh, because it's convenient. What is convenient about the probability distributions that you can then figure out any probability you want? Probability, uh, and this is going to be for this distribution right here, flipping a coin three times with a random variable uh, where the success is get ahead get ahead, not get ahead. Uh, the convenience is that once we have that distribution, we can easily do any probability we want. x greater than or equal to 2, we just add them up. 2 plus 3, we add them up and we get 0.5. And there's a great function in Excel, binome dist, that'll do it um, automatically once you put the arguments in. Now I want to jump over to Excel. Just remind ourselves and do a couple adding probability calculations here. Here's our experiment of tossing a coin three times. Uh, here were our experimental outcomes. This was uh, classical, so for the all of the outcomes, the probability was the same for each, right? This is the this is the list of all the outcomes. Here were all of our outcomes, just like we did. We actually did this by uh, we did this last chapter. Here's all the probabilities for each sample point. Each one is equally unlikely. We uh, counted the number of heads. In this chapter, we'll think of it as number of successes. Hey, if a head is a, a success, when we got three heads, um, we had three successes. In this situation, for this sample point, we had two successes. Oh, this one too had two successes. This one also had two successes. But really, remember we had to add all these up? We had to add one, two, three sample points because the, the definition for a probability of an event get two heads was add up all the sample points. But we don't want to actually add up all the sample points like this each time. So what did we do last chapter? And again, we'll have an example where we do this in our next video. Where we'll build a new example because it's important to, to see from scratch how to do it. Ah, but we listed our random variable. This is a random discrete variable, right? Because we can just get particular values separated by gaps. Uh, we calculated the frequency. Oh, that's from chapter two, remember? Count if. We counted the number of, of uh, one heads we got from up here. Oh, so we get to use our chap. You mean in in this class we have to remember the stuff from earlier chapters? You betcha. Yes, we got our uh, variables, and for each one of these variables, we got our probabilities. Now it's easy to just calculate whatever probability we want, but there are two requirements. We just looked at these a moment ago. In fact, I don't think I did look at them. Um, so we want to go to page three in our PDFs. We talked about uh, probability distribution. We talked about discrete probability functions. We saw two examples. Oh, required conditions for a discrete probability function or distribution. Now think about this. We couldn't go on and talk about probability di distributions or functions if we didn't know what was required for them to be true. And here they are. Oh, we already saw this last chapter described slightly differently. Now, before we talk about these, just remember, last chapter we said, oh, any probability has to between, be between 0 and 1. And when you add up all of the probabilities, they had to equal 1. But here's how they describe it in this chapter. Now, they use f of x in this chapter, but I'm going to put p of x a lot of times because lots of people do it differently in different textbooks and in different um, real world applications. Sometimes you'll see f of x, sometimes you'll see p of x. It just means the p and f are di different and there's uh, variables are all over the place in the real world. So I'm usually going to list both of them because these are the two most common ones you'll see. Oh, so any particular probability has to be greater than zero. But, but wait a second, last chapter we said any probability has to be greater than or equal to, I'm sorry, yeah, great. This one says the probability has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? But last chapter, what did we say? Greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to one. Well, that is sort of unnecessary if you have this second one. Look at this. 
all the probabilities have to be greater than or equal to zero, which means they can't be negative. The second requirement is that when you add up all the probabilities, they have to equal one. Well, if you have this as a requirement, then you don't need to say less than or equal to one here, because if one of them was greater than one, it would violate this rule. So rule one, rule two. And when we're creating from scratch, probability distributions, you got to check both of these. So let's go do that. And we already did this last time. But look at this. Here's our formula. Oh, yeah. Just say, is that greater than or equal to 0? And what does it do? This is a formula in Excel that is called a true-false or logical formula. Totally awesome. And so you check for each one. And we'll do that in our next video when we create it from scratch. Oh, and what do we do? We add it up each one. Total is 1. Number 1 requirement, number 2 requirement, ding, 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 ding. We have a valid probability distribution in our case here, a discrete probability distribution. Now, why is it so awesome? Because stuff like this, when you're calculating lots of probabilities, you have lots of questions you're answering for whatever you're trying to, uh, problem you're trying to solve, easy, you just go get the values here. Now, P of S equals 1, what do we say? We just get that. Probability that in fact, let me blow this up a little bit. So uh, probability of x equals 1, boom, we got it right there. Probability of x greater than or equal to 2, that means the 2 is included. I'm going to Alt equals, which is my keyboard shortcut for autosum, and I'm going to add those two up, Enter. Now, uh, how about x equals 1 or x equals 3? Alt equals, and I'm going to say x equals 1, and I'm going to hold Control, and then click on x equals 3, and then Tab. Another total valid way to do that is that plus this. Now, we talked about at the very beginning of the class when to use the plus. I'm going to Shift Tab and F2, and when to use the sum. Now, when you have a range of values, for example, Alt equals, and then you're going to highlight like 3, when you have a range of values right next to each other, then it's more efficient to do it that way. But these are values that are not next to each other, so it doesn't matter if you do it that way or that way. And we saw a great example right at the beginning of this class of how uh, using range functions, the example I just did here, how it has great benefits. But for these two, it doesn't matter. Either one of these are, 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 both of them are just as efficient. Now, how about x not 2? Now, there's two ways we can do this. One way is probably faster than the other. Alt equals. I'm going to say this one. Oops, I'm going to say this one because here's the x values, right? This one, and actually, I'm going to go like this. Hold Control and get this one. Right? So I'm adding up all of them that are not 2. But probably the fastest way is equals 1 minus, oh, this is the complement rule. Because all of them equal 1, we can just subtract the one that we're, n that we're asking, is it not this, from 1, and we get boom. So there it is. A l just a little bit about a discrete probability distribution, random variables, how it there is a great advantage to build your probability distribution. In our next video, when we come back, we'll build, we'll have a great example, and we'll build all of this from scratch. We'll see these uh, seven requirements for building a probability distribution, and we'll build some from scratch, and then use them to solve some problems. See you next video.